Hello. Today we're going to go over this lecture, Layers of the Atmosphere. And we're just going to talk some, about some basics of the atmosphere um, and some of the things we find in the different layers. So the first one is the troposphere. Uh, the troposphere is, as you can see in this image, it's the closest one to the ground. Um, but it does go up pretty high. Um, part of this is where we uh, fly in passenger planes and we see our clouds and weather here. So the troposphere is the first or lowest layer of the atmosphere. This is where we experience weather and fly during airline travel. Uh, going up to the next one, and you'll see a lot of different images here. Some of them have other layers on them, some don't. But the next one above the troposphere is going to be the stratosphere. And the stratosphere um, looks like it's about 20 miles or so. But the important thing here is within the stratosphere is the ozone layer. And the stratosphere is the second layer. And the ozone layer, which protects us from UV radiation, is found here. And you can see the different types of UV radiation and what gets blocked here by the ozone layer. Okay, <clears throat> let's continue. We talked about the troposphere and then the stratosphere. Next layer is the mesosphere. So mesosphere is the third layer. And one of the things that's of note I would say in the mesosphere. You see this image here of um, meteors falling into Earth's uh, atmosphere. So shooting stars, which is often what we call them, even though they're not stars, or what they really are is burning rocks. Um, uh, sorry, burning space rocks can be found in this layer. So shooting stars or burning space rocks can be found in this layer. And these are small meteorites that are crashing into Earth and then burning up, but they tend to burn up up here in the mesosphere rather than the lower levels. All right, and then going further away from the Earth, we have the thermosphere. This is the last layer. So at this point, we're running out of gas molecules. Uh, it's not dense at all. There's, there's a very... Um, spread out layer of gas molecules or air molecules at this point. This is the extent of gas molecules and the location of the aurora phenomena. This is the aurora phenomena. Usually we see it in different images from the ground, but here you can see it from space, probably from the International Space Station or a satellite. But that's where that happens. The aurora is happening in the thermosphere, that lighting up of the gases in that upper layer. Okay. Another topic that we're gonna cover is something called temperature inversions. So temperature inversions uh, are not your normal conditions. Normal conditions are here, where you have a warm ground, it was warmed up by the sun, that warm air rises and the air tends to get cooler and cooler as you go up, which allows this warm air to rise. It allows this to go up. Temperature inversion is different. You have a warm layer between two cold layers. Well, this cooler air is more dense and it will not go up past that warm layer. So all this stuff gets trapped here, all right? Temperature inversions are weather phenomena that can increase smog and air pollution in certain cities. A warm layer is sandwiched between cold layers preventing air pollution from rising into the atmosphere. So it just kind of builds up, the smog builds up and builds up. Well, if I ask you to think of a city that has lots of smog, you might think of Los Angeles. And in fact, Los Angeles regularly gets temperature inversions, causing a buildup of smog close to the ground. But again, a lot of times this is under very specific conditions. Um, we see it a lot of times in the mornings in these cities uh, because of how it's produced. Um, and it doesn't necessarily last all day long. All right, uh, I hope this helps. Thank you very much.